In today's video, we're going to learn how to navigate around your models at warp speed, focus in on areas that need your attention, streamline the whole process, and save you valuable time. Let's get started. It seems like whenever I see the subject of navigation in a course or curriculum on 3D modeling, it's lumped in right alongside the interface with maybe a sentence or two about the holy trinity of pan orbit and zoom. But I think navigation is a topic worthy of attention all on its own, both because it's deeper and more complex than this surface level treatment makes it appear, and because it underpins everything that we do in 3D modeling. So doesn't it make sense that we get this right from the start? So one really simple thing you can do to speed things up globally, and by that I mean not only in your 3D software, but across your entire workflow, is to go into the operating system settings for your machine, whether you're on Windows or Mac, find the settings for mouse sensitivity or mouse pointer sensitivity, whatever they happen to call it, and crank that all the way up. No, 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 do it now. Oh, oh wait, this video will be here. Okay, you good? Okay, I know this seems crazy at first. If you're not used to it, this is gonna feel very jittery and like you've had too much coffee or something, but I promise you, you will get used to it. And soon you'll be much, much faster because you don't need to move your entire arm across the desk to go from one corner of your screen to the other. It's just a small flick of your wrist. And you will get used to this high speed. Trust me, trust me. Later on, you'll change over to someone else's computer and it will feel very sluggish. You won't know how you worked this way from before. Okay, so let's talk about how to get around the Rhino viewports. So before we get started, I wanted to mention that I am using a three button mouse. Now I've seen people who can model effectively with a trackpad and a one button mouse, but I think if you're doing any amount of serious 3D modeling, a three button mouse is totally worth the investment. Uh, it greatly speeds things up and lets us make use of the scheme that we talked about in the getting set up video, where one hand is responsible for navigating and object selection, and the other is responsible for running commands. One other thing I wanted to mention is that I have all of the default Rhino shortcuts enabled. This is basically just a stock installation, and I think it's good, while the Rhino interface is really customizable, that those of you who are just beginning, start out with the defaults and get used to them. This will make it a lot easier to move around to someone else's computer and work if you really need to. Um, as you get more advanced, you can take a look at how to customize the interface to suit your needs a little better, and we'll have a video about that at some point in the future. So I'm sure at this point you're probably familiar with the basic navigation in Rhino, and that's all done through the right mouse button. So I can use the right mouse button by itself, and moving the mouse to orbit my model. If I hold shift and use the right mouse button, I can pan the camera around. And if I use control in combination with the right mouse button, I can zoom in and out. My personal preference is to use the scroll wheel. It functions basically the same way. You occasionally can get finer control by using the right, the right mouse button in combination with control, but uh, this is really basically up to your preference. So in addition to using the right mouse button in combination with the keyboard toggles to get around the screen, I also can use the zoom command to help speed up navigation as well. So if I type zoom, I can see that there are a bunch of options here, and the ones we're going to go over in this video are the ones I find myself using most commonly, which are Extents, Selected, and Target. So if I select some geometry and run the zoom command by typing Z and Enter, which is the shortcut for zoom, and choose Selected, as you might expect, Rhino centers and maximizes the chosen geometry inside the viewport. You'll also see that if I orbit, Rhino now uses the center of the selected geometry as the center of my orbit. To get back out to see the entire model, I can use a zoom extents, so Z and E for extents. And zoom extents is good for zooming in and out quickly, so to bounce back and forth between a zoomed in or a zoomed out view of the model. And it's also great for getting rid of straggler geometry. Let me show you what I mean. A lot of beginning Rhino users will have a problem where as they're modeling, Maybe they're importing geometry or something, and for whatever reason, there happens to be geometry very far away from the model that they might not pick up as they're normally working. So they're working here on you know a small selection of this. And when you use zoom extents, it takes us out and it fills the entire scene in the viewport. 
Now I know that I really only expect to see this filling that scene, and what I can do is find that other geometry. If I if I didn't if I couldn't see it, I might use a select all and then remove what I can see and then a zoom selected. So this is how these commands start to work together to delete this. And now if I use a zoom extents, I get my model again. The third zoom command I want to take a look at is zoom target, which I can run by typing Z and T for target. Finding the point I want to zoom in on, Rhino is asking me to select a new camera target. So I click, but rather than click, click and release, I drag out a window. And what this is going to do is it's going to define the window that should fit into my viewport. So I can make a very small window and zoom into a very specific point in my model very quickly. Now this is useful especially for things that are uh, very unwieldy, like this, this handrail for instance, if I wanted to get to this corner and I'd use zoom selected, because the handrail is so long, uh, it's very difficult for me to zoom in quickly to this corner, but with zoom target I can click to find a very small window and get into that corner really precisely, and then if I need to zoom back out I can uses zoom extents and this is how we kind of bounce in and out and move around our model really quickly and once we get these zoom tools under all uh, and once we get these zoom tools under our belt you'll find yourself doing the same another thing that is great about these commands is that zoom is transparent meaning that I can run zoom inside another command without interrupting it let's see how that works one common scenario is that you might be modeling two things two versions of something side by side, and you're looking to move things to similar positions on an object. This is something I do all the time. So let's say for whatever reason, this one was missing a handrail, and we wanted to copy the handrail from this version to this version. So what I might do is a zoom target to bring me in nice and close to this to copy, and to then select a point can use zoom target to zoom in here where I can select what I want to copy, run the copy command, zoom target to select the point that I want to copy from, zoom extents to zoom to the extents of the entire model, zoom target on the corresponding point on the opposite model, and click to place. And I very precisely placed my handrail in a minimum number of steps. One skill that I think is important to develop in 3D modeling in general is the ability to isolate what it is that I want to work on uh, from the rest of the model. And let me show you what I mean by that. So let's say that I wanted to work on these cushions for some reason, like let's say I needed to rearrange them in some fashion. It's very common, especially if you're newer to 3D modeling, to try and get in here, and maybe if I'm sophisticated, I'll you know zoom select it and try and get in here so my orbit is limited to here, but as I'm moving around and trying to get the best view of this, okay, I'm on the other side of the wall. As I'm going, I'm trying to, oh, and I'm under the stairs. So this becomes really challenging very quickly, especially if the space around it is very tight. So what I can do is I can select the cushions I'm interested in working on, and then I can invert my selection and hide everything but those cushions. And now I'm free to work on these things in isolation. This allows me to orbit these and find just the view that I want and need to work on them and not be obstructed by any of the other geometry. But let's say that we were working on these and we needed some of the context in order to know where things were. Rather than hiding Rather than showing everything and then having to reselect the entire group along with whatever it is that I need to have as a reference object, what I can use is another command called show selected, which makes everything that is currently hidden visible and it allows me to select the objects that I want to show. So let's say I'm interested in this floor lamp, this wall, and this floor. Now I get these objects visible so I can continue manipulating my earlier selection now with these objects in context.
Now let's turn our attention to getting between views. I find myself doing most of my own work here in perspective view. I find that I can tumble my way around a model very quickly, get to where I need to go and model quite efficiently from just this one view, but occasionally it can be helpful to have an orthographic view at my disposal. So I can run the command for view to get out to my default set of four views, top, front, right, and perspective here that Rhino typically opens with. And I could double click into any one of these views, of course, to maximize that viewport. But from a maximized viewport, I can also get to the next by hitting control tab. This takes me to top, again, takes me to front, once more takes me to the right view, and then I'm back at perspective. So it just cycles counterclockwise through those views. In addition, I can also use keyboard shortcuts to change the display mode. So right now I'm in wireframe, but Control Alt S will get me to shaded. Control Alt G will bring up ghosted and Control Alt R will bring me to a rendered mode. I can also use Control Alt E to perform a quick keyboard shortcut zoom extents. So rendered mode, zoom extents, rendered mode, zoom extents, and rendered mode, zoom extents, and back to four view. If I'm feeling particularly finicky, I can also synchronize my orthographic views. So if I came here to front and brought it up to size here in this display and used synchronized views. This is going to scale the views in the top and the right to align with. So as our models become more complete and they start to enclose space more fully, it can be difficult to get around and get the exact views that we want using the normal navigation tools of pan orbit and zoom. Luckily, Rhino has a way to get around this and it is called walkabout mode. So I'm just going to hide one of the window panes here and zoom in and enter into walkabout mode. And now when I use the right mouse button, instead of orbiting around an object, I'm turning the camera around, orbiting the camera, and you can think of this as like turning your head or moving your eyes uh, if you were actually in this space. So this becomes a useful tool here, and I can pan the camera over with the right mouse button and shift. And I can establish my view here that I'm interested in taking much more easily than I would if I was trying to use the typical pan, orbit, and zoom tools. So in addition, I feel like this is, you know, if I'm looking around this room, this feels like I'm really close up to this stuff, and this has to do with the Rhino camera lens length. So Rhino uses the kind of parameters of a 35 millimeter full frame SLR camera and its lens length as, as the method of kind of telling us how our our level of zoom is going to look here. So we're at 50, which is 50 millimeters in lens length here. If you're familiar at all with camera lens lengths, this is what's going on here. 50 millimeters in camera world is kind of considered normal human vision, or at least that's the kind of shorthand analogy that's used. Uh, 35 is, gives us a slightly wider angle without getting too distorted. So this gives us a little more breathing room here with objects that are close to us. If I go a little lower, 24 is a bit more of a wide angle look, and this is about as low as I would go for any kind of imagery that I was going to be extracting from a model. Much lower than that, and we start to get uh, kind of super distorted fisheye type stuff, or at least incredibly deep wide angle images that, uh, that might be fun for experimentation, but aren't necessarily great uh, depictions of reality. Um, so, uh, I typically kind of max out at the lowest at 24, and I would recommend usually staying somewhere 28 to 35 for the most part uh, for images that you want to kind of feel uh, somewhat realistic here. So in addition to those tools, uh, walkabout mode also gives us the ability to, as it says, walk about our project. To do that, I'm going to use the middle mouse button and I'm scrolling backwards and very little is happening. I can see this one window frame moving very slightly here. And what's going on is Rhino is using a step size value 
to determine how far each you know, tick of the scrolling wheel of the mouse to move me back. And I can increase or decrease that value with page up and page down respectively. So if I page up here a number of times, my rate of advancement here as I'm using my walkabout scroll wheel increases. So much better. I can go a little faster up these stairs. And maybe we want, want to back off if we kind of want to give us the impression of walking down this hall here now at a decent rate of speed and I can turn my camera as I go. And this is much easier than it would be if we were trying to just use typical pan orbit and zoom to make our way around our model. And one last tip here, if you're in walkabout mode and you want to kind of just temporarily uh, zip around like you normally would uh, with the orbit tool, what you can do is position your white crosshair there in the center of the screen that comes up with walkabout mode hold down control and shift and use the right mouse button and you'll orbit just like you normally would in your typical orbit tool and you can position your view here and i let go of control and shift now i've kind of orbited across my model around this table as the kind of center of that view and now i'm back here again in walkabout mode so this way i don't have to toggle walkabout mode on walkabout mode off and move around that way. This kind of gives me the ability to access orbit from within walkabout mode. And finally, to exit walkabout mode, just type walkabout again, and Rhino informs us walkabout mode is now off. And the last couple things I wanted to share with you are some ways of controlling and managing views here in Rhino. So one thing I can do, and one thing that I do very commonly, in fact, is I make use of named views. Now these are really great, especially as I'm trying to establish particular views of my project that I want to be able to return to or I want to be able to export reliably uh, over and over again. So I don't have any named views in here currently. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to navigate to a position that I like. I think this one here is great. And I'm going to save this view and I'll call this one interior, maybe 01. Great. And now what this lets me do is navigate to anywhere I am, and then this will snap me back to this same position. It will return all camera settings to what they are here in this view and make sure that I am precisely snapped back exactly to where I need to be. Basically what it's going to do is it's going to restore all the values here for camera and target to whatever they were at this save state. Now in addition to this, I also have the ability to visualize the camera and its field of view. I can go to view and to set camera and to show camera, or I can just hit F6, that shortcut key there. And what this is going to do is in all of my orthographic views, it is going to place the camera that is here in my 3D view. So I can see I've got the, the camera location here in space, and it's showing me its field of view here, kind of this cone of the camera. And all of these points are editable actually. So I can grab one of these points, move it, and the camera will actually move in my perspective view. So if this works out better for you, for some reason, if you no, you need to have the camera pointed in just a very specific place. You can line it up point by point using this show camera method and then editing these points. And all of these points are going to do slightly different things. So this one is going to zoom in here and it's going to look like, you know, zooming a lens because what it's doing is it's also adjusting this lens length value here. I'm basically changing my field of view for my camera here but then I can just come back and snap back to where I was if I want to restore that. So if I jump back to that, that view, you'll find that these different points all do different things. This one is going to reposition the camera location while uh, keeping its target where it is. So I'm maintaining 
the location of the target for my camera, but I'm moving the position of that camera. So this is like an interesting way to kind of follow something in space. This midpoint here for the camera will move the entire rig. So camera and target both move in that case. I can also move just the target. So this will be like in walkabout mode when I was moving where my camera was pointed. I can rotate where my camera is for a kind of, you know, Alfred Hitchcock style uh, take on things here. It feels a little, a little manic. Um, don't want to do that. So I'm just going to reset my view over here. And then like we were seeing before, we can also adjust that field of view, which is kind of like zooming our lens there into different parts. So anyway, this is a pretty comprehensive suite of tools for uh, navigating your way around models, kind of whatever state they happen to be in. Early on, I find that pan orbit and zoom uh, along with the zoom selected, zoom extent, zoom target, those things are totally fine. Walkabout mode can be great once you are uh, far enough along that you're starting to establish a kind of spatial relationship within your enclosure and you need to navigate around inside of something. This can be really handy for that. It's a little more uh, intuitive and makes a little more sense than trying to kind of push my way through with pan orbit and zoom. So uh, try some of these tools out. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And yeah, I hope these, uh, these tools are, are helpful for you. All right, guys. Take care. Happy modeling.